Welcome to my short series of videos on taking better pictures of people. Perfect portraits, if you will. I've been photographing people since the early 1990s, and even now in my capacity as a professional photographer, my fascination with portraits hasn't waned at all. Partly that's because there's a simple joy in creating a good image of another human being, but actually the real motivation is because of the collaborative aspect of it. Um, it's, it's always fascinating, working with people, working together to create something, and the experiences you have with that can be every bit as rewarding, if not more rewarding, than the final image itself. My own experience of photographing people goes all the way back to the early 90s, as I mentioned. These days, I'm a professional photographer, working for a variety of national magazines, commercial clients, PR and advertising agencies, that sort of thing. I work primarily in the areas of sports, fitness and outdoors work, but within that I still take lots and lots of portraits. I've been doing that for around 20 years now, and the years before that I was a photographer's assistant, working for 30 different photographers, everything from car advertising photography to fashion, beauty, all that sort of thing. So a huge range of experience, technical expertise and soft skills picked up across that. Before that, I was at college studying for a degree in photography, and before that, I worked for myself and at the local paper in the East Midlands where I grew up. I've also taught extensively at universities around the UK and regularly teach classes and schools for the Nikon School. So I've got a fair bit of experience photographing people. Uh, I couldn't possibly begin to count, but I have undoubtedly photographed thousands of people in that time. Everything from close friends and family, all the way through to international celebrities for national magazines, for magazine covers and advertising campaigns. So in this series of videos, I want to start by talking about different types of portraits and what makes a portrait photograph. Then I want to get onto the real meat and two veg, which is how to interact with your subject, how to direct them and get a good performance out of them, because this is what really makes a good portrait. I want to cover some technical aspects, but not go into too much depth, because it's very easy to get caught up in technical details and lose the sort of point of what you're supposed to be photographing. And then I want to conclude by talking about how to generate ideas and next steps you can take in order to make your portrait shots even better. So by the end of this series of videos, you should be very confident behind the camera, you should have a very good idea of how to direct your subjects to get what you want out of them, and you should have a good feeling of how to generate ideas and organise shoots that will help you get really good shots. All you'll need is a camera and a lens. If you're able to get manual control over it, that'd be great. If you can change the lenses on it, that would also be great. If you've got some lighting that you've got access to, that would also be great, but you don't need any of that, really. You need a camera and a lens. You could do lots of the stuff I'm talking about with a smartphone, but you'll find the lack of manual control will be a bit difficult. You certainly don't need a big expensive camera and lots and lots and lots of kit. So before we dive into the actual nuts and bolts of how to take better pictures of people, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about what portraits actually are. Well, very simply, a portrait is a picture of a person. When we use that label portrait, it's tempting to think of something quite formal. But of course, a portrait can also be something very naturalistic, very relaxed, very lifestyle in feel. It doesn't have to be a strict, formal, Victorian style portrait. One definition that I do think is important though is that when we talk about portrait photography, we're talking about images of people where there's an element of collaboration. It's an image where the subject understands they're being photographed. Even if by nature, the image is very natural, it's very unforced, very relaxed, sometimes even to the point where it doesn't look like the subject knew the photographer was there at all. There's a difference between portraits, as we're going to be talking, whereby you know, the subject understands they're being photographed, and a picture of a person where they're completely unaware they're being photographed. So, a paparazzi shot, um, a shot of somebody deeply engrossed in a sport they're playing, um, you know, a long lens press shot, all of those things aren't really portraits because the subject isn't part of the photograph. They're not collaborating with the photographer in any way, shape or form. Okay. Now, like all the definitions I'm going to cover, none of this is strictly legal or anything silly or, or dictionary definitions. They're merely a framework by which we can make sure we're talking about the same sort of thing. So just to reiterate, when I talk about portrait photography, I'm talking about something that is collaborative, something whereby the photographer and the subject, or subjects, because of course a portrait can cover a shot of more than one person, it can be a couple, it can be a whole group, 
and that they both understand they're sort of in the game together and there's a collaboration going on, okay? Anything whereby the subject is completely unaware of what's happening and that they're, they're unaware of being photographed, that's a slightly different thing. I don't class that as a portrait. So we won't be covering that sort of thing in these videos. The other category of photography to differentiate portrait photography from is fashion and beauty stuff. The difference here is that in fashion and in beauty, the main aim of the image is to either make clothes look good or a person look good. Now, a portrait may also do that. It's perfectly possible that in taking a portrait of someone, you make them look good and you make their clothes look good, but that might not be your sole motivation. A, a portrait can be about personality. A portrait can be about a big performance. It can be about a whole host of different things. Fashion photography is generally about making clothes look good, so you can sell clothes, and beauty photography or glamour photography or boudoir photography, however you want to label it, is about creating images that are basically about arousal. Now, neither of these types of photography are bad in any way, shape or form. I'm not trying to put them down. I've done both types myself at various times, but they're not what we're talking about when we talk about portrait photography. Now, within this definition of portrait photography, there is still an enormous world of experience and different approaches and ways of creating portraits. A portrait can be incredibly elaborately produced and staged and crafted and carefully put together and labored over and it require stacks of equipment and a huge crew of people and hours of retouching and days and days of pre-production and post-production. And a portrait can also be very lightweight, very fast moving, very relaxed, requiring nothing more than a camera, a lens, the existing ambient light and your subject. What makes a good portrait is very, very difficult to define though. Lastly, in this little introduction, I want to talk about kind of the philosophy, if you like, of what makes a good portrait. Because I think it's quite important to understand it before you get started. The main thing to get your head around is that, of course, what is a good portrait to one person might be a bad portrait to somebody else. What you've got in mind might not be what your subject has got in mind. The clear, clearer you are about this before you start, the better for everyone. Now, you might want, let's say, to create a technically pristine, perfectly executed shot that ticks all your technical boxes and you can look at it and go, oh yes, perfectly lit, pin sharp, everything I want in a portrait. Your subject might see that and think it's actually very cold and unemotional and doesn't, doesn't portray them at all. Whereas you might have taken a shot where you, you just missed focus a little bit or they moved out of the light slightly, but their expression is absolutely perfect and they might love that shot. Now, that's absolutely fine but this is what can happen over and over and over again between what you've got in mind and what your subject's got in mind. The best way around this, of course, is communicating. It's clearly explaining to your subject what you've got in mind before you start, making sure they're on board with any ideas you've got. You're not gonna suddenly suggest something that they really don't wanna be part of, that, no thank you, that doesn't sound like me at all. Likewise, if they're asking you to do something, if you're being commissioned to take a portrait, whether it's by your subject, or in my case as a professional, I'm often commissioned by a third party to go and photograph somebody else and create a portrait of them. Make sure you understand what it is that the other party wants. Make sure you understand how they want to look and make sure you, you think you can do that. You know, if you don't think you can achieve that, then confess straight away and say, yeah, I, I, I don't work like that. I, I can't create that sort of image. I don't have the technical skill, whatever it may be. But do bear in mind, there may be quite a discrepancy between what you think is a good portrait and what your subject thinks is a good portrait. Now, one really simple cheat to get around this is, of course, to shoot more than you might need to and shoot something for yourself and shoot something for them. OK, there is no harm at all in them having what they absolutely love and you having what you absolutely love and it being two different shots. Right, that's enough philosophizing for now. In the next video, I'm going to talk about different types of portraits, which at the very least will help you get your ideas across the subjects better so that you both know you're talking about the same kind of shots. See you next week. It's YouTube, so you know what to do. If you like the video, hit like. Obviously, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications, all those wonderful 21st century social media things that I'm sure you're very au fait with. See you soon.